Hello, my name is Farrakh. Today, we will be talking about how to set up the software necessary to participate in, or to host, a Link to the Past multi-world randomizer. The first half of this video will focus on how to participate in a multi-world game. The second half will focus on how to host a game. Before we begin, there are two pieces of software you'll need, and they are linked in the video description. The first is called SNES 9X Multitroid. You can grab it in its Google Drive, and it's just a version of SNES 9X that's able to run Lua scripts. So you'll want version 1.6 Win32. The second piece of software you'll need is Berserker's Multi-World Utilities. This can be found on his GitHub, inside of Releases, where you'll always want the most recent branch, currently at 181. Scroll to Assets, and download Windows 64 all-in-one.zip. If you'd like to play the Doors variety, you'll want doors. Once those files are downloaded, extract them to your desktop or wherever you're comfortable using them. Open the Windows 64 folder, which is Berserker's directory, and place your base ROM into this directory. It should be named Zelda no Densetsu Kamigami no Triforce Japan .sfc, and this is the Japanese 1.0 original ROM. Legally, you are required to obtain this ROM by dumping it from a physical cartridge that you own. Once you've got that file in place, open the players directory and open easy.yaml. You'll need to configure this. So this yaml file is a set of configuration options that allows you to play the game how you would like and allows other people to play how they would like. So if you want to play an item randomizer, your friend wants to play an enemizer, and someone else wants to play key sanity, you can all play in the mode that you would like, and still participate in a multi-world together. The first thing to do in this file is to change your name. This is what will appear inside of the game as you're playing, and it will appear inside of the client window as items are sent and received. The options in this file are weighted. So, with Map Shuffle, for example, on being 0 and off being 1 guarantees that Map Shuffle will not occur. For an equal chance of Map Shuffle to be on or off, set them both to 1. If on were 9 and off was 1, Map Shuffle would occur 90% of the time. The file is thoroughly commented to explain what each of the options do, and near the bottom you'll find a series of ROM options similar to those available on the website. If you'd like to play as a sprite that is not included in the list, simply add it to the list and wait it as you deem appropriate. Once your YAML file is configured how you would like, rename it to your own name. This will allow the host and anyone else you send your YAML to to know who it belongs to. At this point, you should send your YAML file off to your host, or whoever it is that's generating your game. The next thing to do is to go back into Berserker's directory and open the QUSB to SNES folder. This contains a program called QUSB to SNES.exe. If you double click that, it may ask you to grant access, but you'll see that it will appear inside of your system tray with a My Little Pony icon. So right click on that hover over Devices, and just make sure that Enable Lua Bridge for SNES 9X and BizHawk is enabled. If it's not, please enable it. If you happen to launch this program more than once, an error message will appear. It's okay to ignore this message. QUSB simply doesn't allow itself to be launched more than once. At this point, you should be waiting for a zip file from your host. That zip file should contain a patch file, which should have your name on it, as well as the file extension bmbp. During the next step, please pay attention to the upper left of my desktop here, as a file will be created there. So open back up Berserker's directory, and locate a file called berserkermulticliant.exe. Take your patch file, Click and drag it onto BerserkerMultiClient.exe. You'll see two things happen. 
First, your ROM file is created on the desktop. This file is generated from the base ROM in this directory with the patch file that you used. Your ROM file is generated in the same place as your patch file. So if your patch file is inside of a folder, then that is the same place your ROM file will be generated. You'll see here that the client has launched and it's waiting for a connection from QUSB to SNES via SNES 9X Multitroid. So let's go ahead and open Multitroid. It's inside of the folder that you just downloaded. So now load the file from your desktop. Once the ROM is loaded, click on File, hover over Lua Scripting, and click on New Lua Script Window. This opens a box asking you to browse for a Lua file. The file we want is inside of Multitroid's directory. It's in the Lua folder and it's called multibridge.lua. Clicking on this will assign us a name, though it isn't important, but it is fun. And you'll see that the client automatically connects to the server. At this point, you're fully able to participate in the multi-world. You can start playing and having a great time. But if you would like to use EmoTracker for auto-tracking, it does have support for multi-world. So we can launch EmoTracker here. Drag it to a size where it isn't consuming your entire desktop. And then find the robot face in the bottom right corner of EmoTracker. Right click on it, hover on SNES, and click Lua. You'll now see the robot face turn yellow. This indicates EmoTracker is waiting for a connection. To connect EmoTracker's auto-tracking feature with SNES 9X and the multi-world server, Go back to your emulator and click on File, open Lua Scripting, and use another new Lua Script window. This time, the Lua Script we want is located inside of EmoTracker's installation directory. For me, this is in the D drive inside Program Files x86, inside EmoTracker, the Connectors folder, the SNES 9X folder, and finally, we want connector.lua. Clicking Open, We'll show that a connection has been established, and you'll see the robot face in the bottom right hand corner of EmoTracker has turned green. At this point, you're ready to go. Auto tracking is turned on, and you're free to participate in your multi world game and have a great time. Good luck, and I hope it's not a PED seat. If you would like to host a multi world game, there are a couple other things that we should talk about. But first, I'm going to close absolutely everything that I have open. Inside of Berserker's folder, you'll find that there is a host.yaml file. This file is similar to the previous YAML file, but it contains options relevant to hosting a game. Here, you can do things like set which port you'll be using, set a password, or define a specific multidata file. One thing to definitely note is this port forwarding option. Berserker's multi-world implementation has the ability to attempt to automatically forward the relevant port on your system for 24 hours. It does this by attempting to communicate with your router to command it to open this port. Unfortunately for most people, this option does not work correctly. It may work for you, so give it a try if you'd like. What I recommend is manually going into your router, finding your port forwarding settings, and forwarding the port that you intend to host to the system you intend to host the multi-world on. The default port for both Berserker's and Bonta's multi-world implementation is 38281. Once you have port forwarding configured how you would like, you should collect YAML files from your players and place them inside of the player's directory. Once you have those files collected, 
Go back into Berserker's folder and find a file called berserkermultimystery.exe and launch it. This opens a server window which will first automatically generate the seed. Once the seed is generated, it will begin to automatically host your server and according to your host.yaml settings, it will output a zip file which will contain patch files and it is safe to transfer that file to your players. So here you'll see the game has been automatically started and it gives you an IP address. This is your public IP address which you may need to give to your players. Although the patch file does include the ability to automatically connect your players to your server. So you shouldn't need to send this unless they accidentally get disconnected. We'll move this off the screen for a moment. And you'll see in this directory that a folder called multi-mystery has been created. This folder contains the multi-data file, the spoiler text if you've chosen to create it, as well as all of the ROMs for your players. However, it's not legal to send ROM files, so a zip file has been created, which contains patch files for your players. Patch files are legal to send, so take this zip file and send it off to your players. You can then watch as they connect to your server, then follow the steps that we covered previously to connect to your own multi-world server and you're ready to go. Congratulations on hosting your own Link to the Past multi-world randomizer server. For you, I hope it's a pet seed.